Let me ask you a question. What do Dagwood dogs, fairy floss, and the flu have in common? Well, these are things that a lot of you will pick up at Queensland's largest agricultural fair, the ECA, in just a few short weeks. At least, that's what my experience was like. I remember one year braving the massive crowds at the ECA, picking up a Chubba Chub show bag, eating everything in that Chubba Chub show bag, before going home and having a lovely sugar-induced slumber. When I woke up the next morning, I noticed this tiny tickle in my throat, and by that evening was completely bedbound by the flu. This lasted a whole week. I was aching all over, running a really high fever, and generally feeling and probably looking like I'd been run over by a bus. The worst part for me was that I actually got my flu shot that year, and the year before that, and the year before that too, but it didn't seem to matter. I still got the flu anyway. Luckily for me though, the only lasting impact of my brush with the flu was a convenient introduction today for my talk, but for hundreds of thousands of people around the world every year, uh, a run-in with the flu ends in hospitalization or even death, and current flu vaccines are simply not doing a good enough job to stop this. Now, I am a virologist, so I study viruses every day, and I wanna fix this. I wanna stop the flu and make a flu vaccine that actually works. But first, we need to understand a bit about current flu vaccines and some reasons why they're maybe not the best. So current flu vaccines are based on a protein that sticks out from the surface of the virus called hemagglutinin. And funnily enough, these proteins are a little bit similar to the lollipops that I had in my show bag that year. The head of the protein, which is furthest away from the virus, can change a lot and be lots of different flavors, or what I would call a strain of flu just like a lollipop can be lots of different flavors. The stem of the protein is a lot like the lollipop stick. All the different flavors or strains of hemagglutinin have a stem, and they all pretty much look the same. The flu is a clever virus though, and in order to evade our immune system, it mutates the hemagglutinin protein to make new flavors. This random process might result in a flu changing from banana to say, chalk banana flavor, but the stem, will pretty much stay the same. So current flu vaccines are made by killing this virus with chemicals and isolating what's left of the hemagglutinin protein. This is then given to you as a vaccine where your body learns to recognize the bits of the protein that are left over. So now when your body sees the real virus, the theory is that because of the vaccine, you already have the weapons in place to recognize the virus and stop it before it makes you sick. However, due to the way these vaccines are made and the inherent nature of hemagglutinin, the chemicals often destroy the stem, so much so that it doesn't look like a stem to your body anymore. As a result, these vaccines only teach your body to recognize the head of the protein or the lollipop flavor. This means that if the virus that you happen to catch at the ECA is a different flavor to the one you're vaccinated against, your body can't recognize any other parts of the virus to kill it, so you still get sick. Because of this, we have to make new vaccines every year in order to try and keep up with the new flavors of hemagglutinin. This is not always successful though, and a good example of this is the 2009 swine flu pandemic. A new virus emerged with a completely novel flavor of hemagglutinin, one that the human population had never seen before. Many people became ill very quickly and a lot of these people actually required treatment at the hospital. A new vaccine had to be made rapidly and distributed all around the world. But for many, it was just simply too late. The virus had already made them really sick and for thousands of people actually proved fatal. Clearly, we need new flu vaccines. Vaccines that can better cope with new flavors of hemagglutinin or else the next pandemic could be a lot worse. In my PhD, my goal is to create a universal flu vaccine, one that protects against every flavor of hemagglutinin. That way, it shouldn't matter what flavor of virus you get infected with, your body can still recognize the stem, kill the virus, and stop you getting sick. To attempt to achieve this, we have found a new way using a novel molecular clamp to stabilize hemagglutinin. 
We have shown that this molecular clamp allows us to make hemagglutinin with both the head of the protein and the stem of the protein intact, which is unlike current vaccines where the stem gets destroyed. In order to do this, we take the DNA sequence that encodes hemagglutinin and we add a bit of DNA that encodes our molecular clamp. We then take this combined DNA and put this into cells in the lab. And these cells read that DNA and translate that into a protein. Now, as the cells are reading this DNA and building up our hemagglutinin protein, they're also building up our molecular clamp. And once fully assembled, this molecular clamp is extremely stable. So it brings together hemagglutinin, both the head and the stem, and holds it together in a really stable form. We can then purify this and use it as a vaccine. The goal of using this clamped vaccine is to get your body to recognize the stem of hemagglutinin. As I said, it will not matter then what flavor you get infected with, because your body can still recognize the stem and stop you getting sick. So we tested this theory in mice. We vaccinated mice with one flavor of our clamped hemagglutinin vaccine and then infected them with a completely different flavor of virus, one that they'd never seen before. And when we did this, we saw that our vaccine was still able to protect these mice, even though the virus they were infected with was a completely different flavor. Now, we still need to do more tests, but initial results show that our hypothesis is correct. We are teaching these mice to recognize the stem of hemagglutinin. So then they could recognize the stem on this completely new virus and stop themselves getting sick. In fact, our data shows that our vaccine is up to 80 times better at teaching these mice to recognize the stem than the current vaccine that you get at the doctors. This means, in theory, it should be up to 80 times better at stopping you getting sick with that nasty strain of flu that's keeping everyone off work. More importantly, we showed that our vaccine could teach these mice to recognize hemagglutinin from bird flu. So these are nasty viruses that are usually found in birds, but occasionally jump ship and infect a human. And once a human is infected, you only have about a 50 to 60% chance of survival. Luckily for us so far, a lot of these bird flu outbreaks have been contained to a few people before they get under control. But research in other labs around the world has shown that these viruses only need a handful of mutations in order to be able to spread from human to human efficiently. Meaning the next bird flu pandemic could happen at any day now. And current vaccines would offer very little protection in this scenario. Using current technologies, we would first have to wait and see what virus caused the outbreak, then make a new vaccine based on that virus and distribute hundreds of thousands of doses all around the world. All the while, this virus could be spreading around the globe, killing millions of people. Now, if we had our vaccine, we would stand a much better chance at stopping this pandemic. Everyone who had had our vaccine should be able to recognize the stem of this new virus and stop the spread. This could potentially save countless lives. The beauty about this molecular clamp technology is how broadly it can be applied. Many other deadly viruses like Ebola, SARS, Lassa, and Hendra viruses can all be clamped, as we like to say. You see, each of these viruses has a lollipop-like protein on its surface, just like the flu. And while these viruses don't all have the same issues as the flu with lots of different flavors of virus, these proteins are built in a very similar way to hemagglutinin. And we have shown that we can apply our molecular clamp technology and make really stable vaccines for these viruses too. In fact, we believe we can do this for any virus that has a lollipop-like protein on its surface, even ones that we don't know about yet. So if a new virus emerges tomorrow, there's a really good chance that our molecular clamp technology can be applied and we can make a really stable vaccine rapidly. So while you may think that the flu is just a nasty cold that keeps you off work for a few days, 
It really isn't. It is a deadly virus, and there is enormous potential for a flu pandemic to emerge that would take over the world in a matter of weeks. There are many other deadly viruses, like Ebola and SARS, that have wreaked havoc in the past. Clearly, we need better vaccines to help cope with the flu and these other viruses. And with our technology, we believe we can really put on the clamps. Thank you very much.